What's going on, game? Bolt Matrix here, and today we are taking a look at Skull Smasher from Titans Returns. Okay, first of all, I just have to apologize. I'm recording this on my iPhone S6 or 6S or whatever the numbering is. And that's because I left my video camera at work for a work function, and I really wanted to get this review done. Uh, sorry, I'm a doofus. I admit it. Let's move on. From an aesthetic standpoint, Skullboy here is very good looking, very G1 accurate, and overall just a phenomenally looking and well designed figure. There are some major, major issues with the figure, especially in the quality control department. We'll get into that. Head sculpt is quite good. The headmaster is nice, but very wobbly. Very similar to Scourge, but not as wobbly as Scourge. The figure comes with two accessories, a tail accessory and a gun, both of which can be wielded in robot mode. The tail is meant to house the Titan Master when not in head mode and can be wielded by any other robot. And then the gun fits in the tail section like that and actually holds up the tail when in gator mode. Or actually crocodile mode in this case. Even though the figure in robot mode looks really good, it is complete and total utter garbage. Mine is plagued with the same quality control issues that all other figures have, or all other reviewers that I know who have this figure have. Arms are fine, chest is fine, torso is fine. The problem lies with the hips and the joints here on the swivels for the legs and these little knee bits. The knees clip into the shins, but the clip is so not very tight. Just very little bit of pressure, very, very little bit of pressure pops that out. That is included with an incredibly tight pin in the knee. So this pin is very loose, very loose clip, very tight pin at the knee leaves for some problems. Then the hips are just complete garbage. And the swivels are also, I'm going to actually buy some Pledge Furniture Polish and see if I can't fix this figure. Because I absolutely love the design. The design is wonderful. It reminds me of one of my favorite headmasters from the G1 saga. Or era, not saga. I love the look of this figure. But holy crap, how did these legs make it past production? It's bad. And it's not just me this time. The figure's transformation is quite good, very reminiscent of the G1 figure. Pull the head off, flip the gator head around, but don't quite flip it around yet. We want to take the shoulders and fold them up. There are pins within the shoulders that will lock into these grooves by the head. So just go ahead and <laughs> go ahead and do that and just get everything lined up. And then there are these peg holes underneath what appear to be what should be ball joints or sockets and the head of the gator or croc will peg in there. Fold the fists up into the forearms, fold the croc hands down, then turn the swivels there so that the hands are pointing forward like that. Come to the legs, sandwich them together, unpeg the crocodile feet from the inside of the feet, fold up the feet into the shins, and then flip the legs around like that, and they're supposed to peg into this section here on the back, but the pin or the peg for the hips is too big and the legs don't peg in. They just kind of rest there like that and they do come apart very, very easily. They just slide off super, super easily. Finally, come to the back, this peg here, peg the tail in and come to the back middle of the crock, flip open the compartment, and make the headmaster sit, or type master, in there, and close it up. And here we have the crocodile mode, which I like a lot. I think this crocodile mode is fantastic, save for a few very, very minor issues. The biggest issue I have is this back flap here is super soft plastic. Very, very soft plastic, which I feel could be problematic, and the overall pose of the croc mode doesn't quite look right. It looks more like a, I don't know, like an iguana or another type of lizard than a crocodile, just because of the proportions of the front hand or front claws to the back claws. But otherwise, he's pretty poseable. The back tail moves, legs move, front legs have plenty of posability, front claws have posability, head is on a 
ball joint that's somewhat limited, and his mouth opens, and he has fantastic detailing within his mouth. Look at that detail on that tongue, those teeth. It's great. The plastic is a little bit soft, but I'm okay with that, because the overall look and the overall functionality is wonderful. Skull Smasher could be an absolutely fantastic freaking figure if he didn't suffer from some major QC issues in the legs. I think that's fixable. I'm going to try and fix it, and I will report back. This would be my favorite figure if those QC issues didn't exist. Avoid this guy until maybe the second running when they have everything fixed. So, gang, I hope you've enjoyed this quick video review on my iPhone. As always, I'm Bolt Matrix, asking you to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.